Hey y'all and welcome back to my channel. I'm very excited to share my process on how I created my first 3D tumbler. This is not a tutorial by any means because I am sure that I did a few things, quite a few things <laughs> incorrectly, but I wanted to share my process just because I know that it is hard to dive into something that you're uncomfortable with. But as artists, we have to be able to step out of our comfort zone sometimes, and this most certainly did that for me. But it also helped build my confidence in doing 3D tumblers in the future, and I'm definitely going to give it another shot. So I hope that this helps you as well. In the background, we have been unboxing the awesome package that I received from Dimensional Drinks. Dimensional Drinks creates 3D printed objects that you can place on tumblers. These are specifically made for the steel magnolia plumps, so they'll fit on the 16, the 24, the 32, and even the Slim Coolsy and the hydro fence. So they're very versatile, especially being made for the steel magnolia tumblers, who also has the cafe style dome lids that will go on their tumblers as well. So you can really, really create something crazy with this, combining the 3D printed items from dimensional drinks and the versatility of the steel magnolia tumblers really awesome combination and they also have a couple other items on their website aside from just these book sleeves so you definitely want to go check them out and see what they have before i even started painting these i had already made a mistake and this is with dimensional drinks their awesome team telling me through messenger and with the informational card that come with this package also says to make sure that you add a layer of epoxy to these to smooth them out since they are 3d printed they do have a little bit of texture to them well in my mind i was going to go with an opal glitter or something with a little bit of color to it maybe even match my paint colors with glitter and for whatever reason, I ended up going with a clear glitter. So you can definitely see the lines through the glitter at some point in this video, but we do end up distressing it because of another mistake that I made. So it all worked out in the end. But if you plan on leaving these solid with no glitter on top, definitely give them a thin coat of epoxy before you go into painting them just to smooth everything out really well and hide those 3d printed lines to paint these we are going to be using the artistry color fix color flex paints for our cream color we're using latte latte and electric teal to make this really pretty minty color and then we're also going to use banana cream for our yellow I did go over the entire surface, even the ring in the center, just in case you can see that after I put that down on my tumbler. The only thing that I did not paint was the part where it would be the paper inside the book, and we will later add that on. But I did even go in, not in this video, but I did go in later and fine tune around the edges just so I can give it an even more realistic look with just really paying close attention to that fine detail.
After I had my books painted and completely dry, then I stacked them up and just kind of moved them around, played with them just a little bit to get them in the position that I wanted so that I have an idea before I put my epoxy on. You can seal these with glue, but I chose to use a fast setting epoxy since I was going to use that to create my handle. The tumbler we're using does not have a handle on there, but the Steel Magnolia does sell a handle mold. And I know what you're thinking. I thought the same thing too. How is this as durable or sturdy as a stainless steel handle that is welded to a tumbler? It's not. You cannot have epoxy match the durability or the toughness of stainless steel. However, it can be very sturdy and durable enough to hold the weight of your tumbler all these extra things that we're adding on and the drink inside, as long as you put your handle on first and all of your epoxy layers go on top. As your epoxy cures, it is going to harden. And by putting this on as our very first step for the top portion of our tumbler, we're gonna have two layers of epoxy on top of our glitter, as well as two final coats. There could be an additional one in there somewhere in between things happen. So at least a minimum of four coats of epoxy is going on top of this. So it is going to really add to that durability and sturdiness. I definitely should have had gloves on in the very beginning. I wasn't really thinking about having to pull and move this mold around. <laughs> so definitely have some gloves handy whenever you pour your resin into this mold. I did use the Artistry 1 to 1 ratio facet and it cured great in the handle mold. Then I took that excess epoxy and I'm going to use it to seal my books in together. Since I used a facet epoxy, I did just give that about 30 minutes to set up and then put a pretty generous amount of epoxy on the inside of the sleeves so that I can slide the tumbler down inside. Now, you do want to do this over top of a silicone mat so that you can remove that mat just in case there are any bits of epoxy that drip down once you slide your tumbler in. I chose to place my books all the way down on the surface so that they would sit flat with the bottom of the tumbler. You can, however, put a little something underneath the sides of them if you want to lift them up a little bit so that the tumbler is the only thing that is touching the surface below. After our books had fully cured to our tumbler, I demolded the handle and I did have to scrape off a little bit of a lip that it had from where the mold closed and I got a little bit too much epoxy there so I sanded that off and then I'm going to sand the ends that is going to attach to the tumbler and I'm also going to use the same sandpaper to do that to the tumbler as well so we can get maximum grip with our epoxy. We're going to use the PDB Creative Studio UV resin to adhere our handle to the tumbler. So I lined it up on my tumbler first and just used a pen, or actually this is a weeding pen, and scored it a little bit just to mark where I wanted that top handle to be. I added some UV resin on the ends of our handle 
placed that on the tumbler, got it lined up really well, and then used my UV light for two minutes to cure that up. Okay, so here is the part where I knew that I went wrong in many areas, but I gave it my best effort even after watching a couple tutorials of my own <laughs> on how to work with clay. I grabbed this clay from Hobby Lobby and just grabbed a rolling tool to go along with it. That is the only tool that I got to work with this because I did not anticipate on working with clay much more or any more at all in the future. I'm sure I will make somebody cringe <laughs> with just using what I have to try to create this spout for the watering can, but I gave it my best and I absolutely welcome any tips and tricks or maybe tools that you suggest that would make this a little bit easier for any clay projects that I do in the future. So I just needed my clay to sort of heat it up a little bit in my hands and make it a little bit easier to work with. I rolled that out to a circle, cut some of that excess off, and then I used my pen as a tool to kind of help me roll it up without it folding into the other side and create this cone shape to go onto our tumbler. Once I felt I had the proportions sort of right, <laughs> then I held it up to the tumbler and put it at the angle that I wanted it cut that curve into the clay so that it would fit perfectly onto the tumbler once we bake it. I'm not really explaining my steps through this because again, I really didn't know what I was doing, but I just gave it my best and created the spout. And then I went in and created the top. I just used one of my measuring cups for the circle so that I could get a perfectly round circle, trimmed off a little bit of that excess on the edges and then use the end of the rhinestone tool from PDB Creative Studio to put the little holes that the water would come out of. After I had these all put together, I did leave these two pieces separate and followed the directions and baked it on 275 for about 15 minutes. These pieces were kind of wavy when they come out of the oven, so I did sand them down just a little bit, so that's why they do look 
sanded. And then I used the same PDB Creative Studio UV resin to attach those two pieces together and then attach them to the tumbler. I did use my UV light on these for a total of two to three minutes each time I attached something using the UV resin, but it was a sunny day, so I did also sit it outside so it can catch some UV rays to make sure that these were really stuck to the tumbler. I'm using the Colorflex Steel Gray Color Fix paint to paint the top portion of this tumbler or what would be our watering can. I did, of course, want everything to have the stainless look. Sounds a little crazy painting over this stainless tumbler. However, we have a clear handle and the handle is a different color than the tumbler itself. I wanted them all three to be one color so our glitter would not look different in different areas. Before I added on my glitter to the tumbler and the books, I wanted to distress our books a little bit to make it look like real paper. So I combined Latte and Grounded from Color Fix. I did originally want to keep this kind of clean and sleek, like a new watering can with a plant growing out of the top, sitting on the top of a few books about growing plants. So if you're going for a really nice clean look with your books, this is a really good option. I have also seen some use a teeny tiny bit of a brown alcohol ink in some regular alcohol to sort of water it down and fade that color a little bit. And then adding that on with a bristle brush to create those lines to appear as if there is paper stacked. I would have went a lot darker and heavier with my color if I had known in the end we were going to end up really distressing this. The only reason that I went from a clean sleek design to something that looked like it had been sitting outside for quite some time is because on my first layer of epoxy over the glitter that we are going to add on here in a bit, I used a fast setting epoxy. I really should have used a regular set to give myself plenty of time to take my time and really work the epoxy into all those crevices and creases that are all over this tumbler. But I didn't, I tried to rush through it. And of course I didn't have enough time and my epoxy started setting up a little bit. So although I did get some of those micro bubbles out with my torch, there were some areas that were hard to reach or hard to get to in time. So that is why I went in with that super distressed look like it's been sitting outside. 
I have always really, really discouraged trying to cover up micro bubbles of any kind in your design if you get them. I've had quite a bit of people message me and say, hey, how do I fix this? Can I cover it up with a maybe adding mica into my epoxy or what can help? And I always tell them they're going to have to start over because covering up micro bubbles normally looks horrible. And you are going for quality. But in this case, those micro bubbles were pretty centralized to certain areas, such as around the handles, around the top of the tumbler, around the bottom of the tumbler, all areas that would have been more weathered than others. So I was able to get away with covering those micro bubbles up without affecting the quality of my design. Okay. So adding on our glitter, I'm using the Colorflex Glitter Glue. I'm painting that on very carefully to make sure that I get all areas. I'm going down in that little crease in between my tumbler and the book sleeves. We're going to do the top portion first, and then we will work on glittering our books. We're going to combine about a 50-50 mixture of Brilliant and Testament from PDB Creative Studio. We have one that's really bright silver and the other is more like a gunmetal color. I thought those two would look really nice without being too bright or too dark. And I just dumped that all around, focusing on that handle and the spout and those hard to get areas and made sure that I had all areas covered. I allowed that to dry for about an hour and a half to two hours, sealed it twice with Rust-Oleum Matte Clear Coat. I didn't want that silver to fall in to our book areas. And then in all areas that I had originally painted, I went back over with that glitter glue and used pure white from Colorflex to give these books a nice shimmer. I avoided putting any glue on the paper part of our books and I did each one of them one at a time so that I could give myself enough time to work with the glitter and my glue not dry. I did allow the glue to dry once I had my glitter on for about two hours and then I sealed that again with Rust-Oleum Matte Clear Coat and gave this one very thin coat of epoxy. You may not be able to see their micro bubbles in this video, but they are most certainly there. 
So I'm going to resort to one of my very old tricks that I used way in the beginning and use paprika or chili powder to create a rusty can. I know you'll ask, will this mold? And no, it will not. I used it on a tumbler that I made for my dad about three years ago, and the tumbler still looks brand new and just fine. I mixed it in with some more of my Colorflex glitter glue, and I'm just going to go all around the tumbler and those problem areas that I had and cover that up. This does only have one layer of epoxy on it, so it does still have some texture, which is really helping with give giving the rusty parts texture as well as allowing some of that silver to pop through. Once I have finished up all of those areas, I'm going to go in with some black color fix paint and pretty much do the same thing, just going over some of those areas as well as creating new ones with the black paint to further distress the look.
I wanted to also create a shadow at the bottom of what is supposed to be our watering can as well as some rust kind of clumped up around the bottom of the can from where it's been sitting on top of our books. After I have that shadowy rust created at the bottom of our watering can, I'm going to go in with grounded and succulent, just adding those two into my existing little mess of a paint cup and focus on all of the edges of the books and the creases where they stack on top of each other to make it look like we have that green, dirty moss growing on the edges. After I finished all of my distressing, of course, I didn't forget the bottom of the tumbler either. I did give that another coat of epoxy, and then we're going to cut a few strips of this copper textured tech wrap craft vinyl and add those stripes onto our books. After I added all my stripes, I went shopping for some flowers for my topper and I got a little excited, so I jumped on that before I finished the actual tumbler. We have two different options for a topper. Dimensional Drinks actually has this dispenser that you can decorate the top. A lot of people don't want this as a tumbler, 
but it can be used as a decorative piece on your desk that has a dual purpose of a pencil or pen dispenser. I do not show adding the florals to the pencil dispenser in this video, but of course I will upload that to Instagram. Pretty much the same process except we're putting it on top of a flat surface instead of adding it onto a tumbler lid. Now I do have the little piece that seals the mouth part of the or the spout part of my lid here. I do end up adding that piece back in because I want my lid to be able to be completely sealed. And I didn't even think about that until after I had all of these attached to that lid. And then I had to remove them, add that little piece back in, and then redo the whole process. But I am showing you the first time that I've done this, just do know that I did take these florals back off. I did add that piece back in so the lid would completely seal. I also do wish that I would have used my UV resin to attach all of my florals to my lid so it would be a little bit more secure. I did use a hot glue gun to attach them only because that was the first thing that come to mind since any time that I have worked with florals like this, I've been adding them to a wreath or something like that and use a hot glue gun. If I were to have used UV resin, I would have placed the glue on any of the florals and added the lid since it's clear on top of the UV lights itself and face the UV light up so that every time I add it on a floral, I can just quickly cure that into place. Not 100%, so I would have done 30 seconds to a minute just to secure it until I had all of them on there. And then I would have done the full two to three minute cure time with my UV light to really lock everything in and harden that resin. All of my flowers are from Hobby Lobby. I grabbed them from their big floral section that they have and then the lavender pieces and some of the smaller pieces are from the wedding section. Spring is coming up so they have flowers literally everywhere in that store. So I did browse around just to make sure that I was getting the best deal. And you can definitely find some smaller things that you can use for fillers in other areas of the store aside from that main floral section. After I finally finished that topper, I added in the straw to make sure that it went through nicely. And then I moved along to adding the words to my books. 
In the beginning, like I said, I wanted to have a clean, sleek design. And the plan was to put some florals coming out of the top of the can steel, but on the books have things like how to grow flowers or, or something like that. Not really inspirational, just plant books and a pretty watering can <laughs> with flowers coming out of it. But I'm really glad that it took this turn because after I looked at it for a while, it was almost like this old rusty watering can that's been sitting on these books forever out in the weather and had a new life as a planter with some beautiful flowers coming out of the top. So I wanted to change this up and go with more of a inspirational or motivational piece. And we used grow through what you go through, bloom where you are planted and keep going, keep growing. When I had to distress this a lot because of the micro bubbles, I got really bummed out because I had this idea in my head and sometimes those ideas do not play out exactly how we see them. But I always say in my tutorials that, you know, things may not work out as we plan, but that is where our creativity needs to come in and we can find a solution to the problem. Like I said, I never encourage covering up micro bubbles. These were just super centralized to the areas around the bottom of our watering can, the top around the bottom of the spout and the handle. So all of those problem areas, it could 100% be covered up without affecting the quality of this piece. However, I was still like, I really don't like this distressed look. It's not going to come together. I was pretty negative about it. But once I started adding on those stripes and I was able to create this really pretty topper, I was actually really happy that it took that turn. Since I'm adding super thin layers of epoxy, I did end up adding three layers to the books below. So I added on this layer of epoxy. Then that focused on the books on the second coat since we were covering up those decals. Lightly sanded it and then added on a final coat. Again, I will be showing the process of creating this pencil dispenser lid on Instagram, but I did want to show you how cute it was on the cup and how it worked. I hope that y'all have enjoyed watching the process of me making my first 3D tumbler. All materials that I have used will be listed down in the description below, of course, with exception of the materials I got from Hobby Lobby. If you are wanting to dive in creating some 3D tumblers, one, don't be afraid. All you can do is give it your best shot and you may be surprised at the results. And go check out Dimensional Drinks on Instagram. They have some pretty incredible artists tagged on their page that you're definitely going to want to follow if you want to go down the 3D Tumblr journey. That is all for today. Thank you all so much for following along with me and we will see you next time.